Hello and welcome to Lag Theron. So today I'm just going to talk to you about how my code, uh, my program, differs from Michael C's. Um, I'm assuming that most people viewing this have probably already looked up Michael C's code, maybe experimented with it. So I'm just going to sort of show you how to extend on his programming and maybe show you some things in C Sharp that you may not know. Um, so, as most of you probably already know, uh, you have to initialize a new speech recognition engine, which can be found in system.speech.recognition, um, and speech uh, system.speech.synthesis is uh, how Anna will speak back to you. Uh, a quick note, uh, to import those properly, you have to go project, add reference, uh, when it comes up. Um, and find it in this .NET and then click on it and click OK. Uh, and then uh, it will all work perfectly. Uh, so mine differs in these couple lines here. So in, my, in the general code, in the basic code, uh, you load in your grammar dictionary uh, so it can, your recognizer can recognize all the English words. Uh, and then you uh, up load in a file of uh, commands, of just basic commands, uh, which will only really be recognized by a bunch of switch statements like these here. Uh, I still use, uh, my code is in between as it's in development, so I've got half the switch statements uh, commands and uh, half this new version. So these two lines are setting up your basic grammar. Well, to extend that, I've created this grammar building class, which is just your own class in another file, uh, which takes in the recognizer and a list of new words that you wish uh, for your recognizer to choose from. Um, uh, create a new choice using, well, new choices, uh, creating using these new uh, words or list of words depending on how you're using it. Uh, I append this to a grammar builder and then uh, load the grammar uh, that we've created back into the recognizer. Uh, this method here is probably a bad example as it it's just like one bunch of choices. It, it doesn't really matter. Um, but here's where it gets a bit better. Um, in your before words. So in my previous video I got Anna to open Facebook for me and I did it using this. Uh, you can set a keyword um, to be put in before your choices. So you can have a list of websites and then um, your recognizer will hear your keyword which in this case is open and then it will search for a word that matches one of the choices in your list. And this is done pretty simply by, cre as before, creating a new choices, but appending the keyword before you append the list of choices. So you'll get your static string of possibly open or whatever you want it to be, then you'll have your list of choices, and that it will, will append this setup to your recognizer. So you can say, open Facebook, or you could use the same command, open YouTube, to open YouTube. So you'll, it's, it's essentially one line of code instead of a very large uh, switch statement with multiple cases that don't have breaks. And it's more, I think this simplifies code. Um, I hope it does anyway. Uh, you can also add words to, so you can say the choices first and then a keyword. Uh, so I use that for when I'm asking about the weather. I say, how's the weather forecast? And the keyword forecast immediately says to the recognizer, oh, it wants me to display tomorrow's weather information and gives me tomorrow's weather information. I also created another overload which allows you to have a before and after keyword. Um, 
for all situations. Uh, so yeah, basically uh, I added them back in uh, and loaded them into the recognizer. I have this true statement here uh, to specify whether those words are before or after your choices. True states that they're before, um, and if there wasn't any bool there at all, it'd be after. Uh, I also have this statement here to make sure that the grammar recognizes and all the grammars are loaded in correctly. I'll show you how that works here. What can I do for you, sir? Anna, mute. Muted. So if she didn't say, what can I do for you, sir, after pressing play, that means my recognizers haven't loaded in properly, my grammars probably won't work, and she'll probably, she'll probably still run, um, but she probably won't recognize specific commands. Uh, yeah. Now we'll just close her. So that's a little bit of um, how I've improved the code. Uh, I'll just, uh, I'll quickly show you the if statements I use for, to, for it to recognize your new uh, loaded in grammar. So I split uh, your, the recognized speech into an array of strings and check each of the elements in the string to see if they match one of the elements in our uh, new word arrays, which are up here, for example. So for greetings, if one of the words recognized is in this greetings array, then it will make Anna say, what can I do for you, sir? Um, I've done it this way over the switch statements to sort of give Anna a bit more personality, and it's not as restrictive, because you can say an entire sentence, then a keyword, and it should still recognize it, and still carry out what you want it to do, rather than having to pause for a couple seconds of silence, then offer the, the command. Uh, I can go into more depth than this, all you have to do is drop a comment if you're interested in seeing more code. I look forward to making more videos. Hit like and subscribe. Thanks for listening.